Hi, this is going to be a guide and a review of the Flextail Solo Adventuring Toolkit. Through this series of videos, I am going to attempt to explain how to use this toolkit in your solo role-playing game sessions. This is going to be particularly useful for those of you that have just started to experiment with solo role-playing games, but for those out there that have already played solo RPGs before, maybe these videos will serve to provide some ideas or some thoughts that you can use uh, in your own solo campaigns or uh, sessions, etc. Now, let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality... Uh, there are some errors. There's nothing that is going to be a big deal, that is going to present a major obstacle when understanding the content. But there are errors related to bookmarks. The, when it comes to the text, there are missing letters in some cases. Some of the values in some of the tables are switched. For example, in the slow and fast experience table, there are values that should be, that are out of place. That is, you can immediately tell because of the numerical values that some numbers should be in another section of the table. So those are minor errors. Now, sometimes the text and the graphics look a bit cramped. So when it comes to the quality, it's, uh, I, I don't want to say barely decent, but it lacks a certain polish. Because the document is quite colorful, it, it looks great. You obtain a printer-friendly version, or rather um, a mobile-friendly version. And the complete document with uh, the entire uh, color background. So, because the organization and the material, the theory, the writing is great, I'm willing to take these errors of quality as, as a minor thing. Because the content itself is so amazing. Currently, this is the best solo role-playing game toolkit that you can find. This is currently the, the, the source, this is it. This is everything that you need for your solo RPG sessions. This is not to say that it invalidates other oracles and toolkits out there, but they become secondary in my opinion, or perhaps they fall into a supporting role when compared to all the material contained in the Flextail Solo Adventuring Toolkit. So with that, let's move on to the content. After a brief foreword of the intentions of the author and some background concerning how this text came to be, you immediately get to the overview section of the document. This overview section, in my opinion, contains a part that is... it seems out of place with the rest of the document. It is the least useful subsection of the book. And I will try to explain why in a few moments. Well, uh, let's start with this introductory part that says, what is this book? It reads, this book is intended to be any or all of the following. These are listed in no particular order. It says that the book is supposed to be a standalone tool. You can also use it for, as inspiration for running a traditional role-playing game with your group. It also serves as a dynamic content generation tool to quickly create endless quests, dungeons, rewards, threats, anything that you can think of. This document contains everything that you need in any role-playing game. In a, sorry, in any solo role-playing game. It also supports traditional group play but this is the best toolkit for solo gaming. And this book is also a companion to the Flextail Encounter Generator books. I only have one of them. In fact, I thought that there was only one, but maybe there are going to be more books. For those of you that do not know about the Encounter Generator, it's basically a way to generate incredibly specific details. You generate the contents of a sack, the things that you find on a table, the content inside of a chest. So through it, you're going to get results such as beans, flour, 
writing utensils, books, normal weapons, and such. So that book, although it is quite useful for those of you that want to generate all sorts of fine details or finer details concerning different encounters, dressings of the dungeon rooms, etc., it is not necessary. This toolkit that we are taking a look at today is everything that you need. It's truly a standalone product. Next, we move on to context and assumptions. This book assumes the following. The reader is entering the solo experience with a background of having played traditional tabletop RPGs. Yes, if you haven't played uh, a traditional RPG before, do not start with this book. I'm not saying it's impossible, but this book... If you have never played a role-playing game before, it feels too much at an expert level. But if you have some experience with tabletop role-playing games, definitely start using this book. And like I said, it's not impossible to start to learn how to play an RPG using this book, but I would first read through the core book, perhaps take a look at some sessions in here in, in YouTube or Odyssey or whatever, and take a look at how things proceed. Or better yet, find a gaming group or someone to really get you into the hobby. The next point is, the reader is not picking this book up as the very first example of pen and paper RPGs. Yes, as I mentioned. Then, the reader is in possession of the core rule books. Of course, you need your role-playing game of choice to use this book. Otherwise, it's not worth it. You could use perhaps the mechanisms in this book to create a sort of role-playing game, but it's better to use an existing system, of course. The reader is familiar with the rules of their selected rule system, of course. The reader is familiar with the basic mechanics, yes. The reader is capable of creating his or her own player characters, of course, once again. No matter what the reader's level of comfort with their chosen rules system is, they are willing to modify some of those rules. Now, this refers to um, a section later on in the book that contains information to add some bonuses and penalties, some positive and negative modifiers, some minor tweaks to the way that you are playing a role-playing game with a single player character. Like I said, this book is incredibly complete, the most complete solo role-playing document in existence. So if you want to play a role-playing game with a single player character and you are not using some other sort of tweak or modification or rules such as the um, solo rules from Kevin Crawford. If you are playing a D20 based system, it's called Solo Streams, Solo Heroes, something like that. I'm going to put the link in the description below to that document. Unless you are using that, you will have to use some, some of these tweaks so that your single player character feels competent enough to take on the challenges that otherwise would require an entire party of adventurers. Now, it reads here. With that said, however, this book also attempts to do the following. Provide thoughts and guidance on the Game Master related elements of solo play. And that's true. There's a lot of good um, theory contained here. Then. Provide tools and ponderings on several aspects of the core rules of the supported game systems. That's also true. There's a lot of good... There, there's advice and tips on how to handle any role-playing game. Even though this toolkit is somewhat geared towards fantasy, you can use it with any theme, any sort of style of RPG. And it says here, Act as a starting point for initiative, dynamic and easy to create adventure content generation. Yes, if you, are, if you are looking for something to create your own campaigns, encounters, adventures in traditional play, this is one of the most dynamic books out there. Now, here we have information on the strengths of the book. This book contains a wealth of tweaks, tools, and of course, tables that can be used in any combination to produce a truly infinite amount of dynamic adventure content. Yes. Although these tools were written with an eye towards producing this content for solo role players, nearly everything can be used in traditional uh, RPG, uh, an RPG session. There has never before been so comprehensive a tool engineered towards empowering and fueling solo adventures. Now this may come off a little bit arrogant, but this is true. 
this is currently the most comprehensive, the best solo role-playing game toolkit in existence. At least when it comes to my opinion, I can definitely agree to that. Now here it says, when to use this book. If you intend to pursue solo play of a tabletop RPG, if you are in need of zero preparation, ready to use adventure content, either as a solo player or as a game master or dungeon master in traditional group social play. If you are curious about whether solo play is for you, if you are looking for inspiration as to how to become a better game master or dungeon master. Yes, those points, I completely agree with them. This book will help you in those areas. And then, what this book is not. This book does not contain full tabletop role-playing game rules. Uh huh. This book also lacks a scripted, structured, pre-designed adventure. Yes, although this book contains information to play existing modules that you have purchased or that you have designed on your own as a player character, as a solo player character with a simulated game master. There are some, I would say it's not perfect and I will talk more about that when we get to that particular section. Of course, there is no perfect subsystem to represent that, but I think some further tweaks would really enhance the content. So I can't wait to talk about that section. That is not to say that you cannot use those, those rules, that subsystem, without the things that I'm going to talk about, but I think uh, you will benefit from considering what I am going to mention in that section. Then you have how to use this book. There is no wrong way to use this book. However, as the approach used is perhaps somewhat different than other takes on similar material, some guidance may be useful to consider. And yes, for those of you that feel a bit intimidated because of the huge size of this document, 588 pages, just dive in and start using things however you see fit. Although, like I said, that's my, my intention is to provide some tips potential guidance in case of beginners on how to use this material, but do not feel intimidated. This book is your own. Make it your own. Use it however you wish. Then it says, on its own, the Flextail Solo Adventuring Toolkit is designed to be fully usable without any other IGS, that is the company, or Flextail products. There are some suggestions on the books that you can use to support this book this toolkit, but like I said, it's completely standalone. Then they give you some further tips. For example, you could use this as a Game Master Quick Start. There is a section dedicated to that. You can also use it as a support or a handhold for your own Game Master endeavors in traditional RPG sessions. There's also a finger stabbing, stuck, have writer's block, out of ideas as a Game Master, Open this book to any page at random and stab your finger at any paragraph. So that's it, you could even use it randomly like that. It also serves as inspiration for adventure design. And here is where they give you some tips on other books that you can use, like the... Um, there is a book, I, I forget the name, but it's basically a, a book containing many pre-generated player characters. That is the least useful document, in my opinion. But when it comes to the Flex AI guide containing the parameters and artificial intelligence for player characters and non-player characters, depending on how you are running things, uh, please check out my playlist in the description of Abraham's method, a method that I developed to play as a solo game master using emulated player characters. I mentioned some of those books in the videos of that playlist. So yes, there, there are some materials that you can use to support the solo toolkit, but they are not necessary, especially considering that some of those... This book contains some samples of those books. Then we have information on notes and conventions. As is typical in a role-playing game adventure or module, some text here is meant to be read or shown to players verbatim. Ah, yes. Okay, here is the list important section that I was talking about. When they start talking about notes and conventions and player descriptive text and all of that, it seems m more like a promotional blurb for the um, 
adventures and other materials produced by this company, by IGS. They tell you about the quests and skill checks and all of that. So it's, in my opinion, it feels completely out of place when compared to the rest of this document. And it's not completely useless information because they tell you about how you can modify uh, difficulty levels. They have a system of blocks, of colored blocks. That is, if you have, let's say you have an example of a locked secret door. The difficulty class to detect that door and to disable the device, open it, break it, etc. When it comes to a, a light blue colored square, the difficulty is quite low. But then as you go up to blue, um, brownish color and red, the difficulty becomes harder. So that way, it's basically a manner in which you can, that you can use existing adventure modules and adapt their difficulty to your particular group. So that way you can run an adventure for a group of five level player characters or maybe for 10 level, uh, 15 level by taking those difficulties into consideration. This also applies to rewards, traps. So it's all about that. But like I said, it feels a bit out of place um, compared to the rest of the material because it feels like something applied to included solo adventures in this toolkit, even though this toolkit does not contain solo adventures. This is a completely specialized generation tool. After all of that information, you have details on reward nuggets. These are basically a handy way of representing experience points using tokens instead of writing and erasing, writing and erasing the experience obtained during the course of an adventure. So they give you sample values of experience points. That is one token is worth this many experience points. So that way during the session, the game master only needs to hand out these tokens, one token, two token, and at the end of the session or wherever you feel like it, you can exchange or trade those tokens for experience points so that you can level up. So it's a, um, I think it's a handy system, definitely worth looking into um, to consider if you want to use it to save some time when it comes to bookkeeping. And this concludes this part of the guide. I will try to bring out videos semi-regularly, hopefully perhaps one video every two weeks to further tell you how to use this solo toolkit. The next part is going to be quite exciting in my opinion because it's a very mm, effective and efficient way of running a quick solo RPG. In fact, I think this is the perfect section. If you have never played a solo RPG before, this is the best section to get you started. So I definitely I am looking forward to talk about that section. So uh, thank you for watching this part of this guide and review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Or even suggestions, your own suggestions on how to use the material in this book. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do it will be in the description below. This is just the beginning. Through this series of videos, we are going to become experts at using the Solo Adventuring Toolkit. Once again, thank you and see you later.